What's going on, you guys? It's Ty Cole in the building here with Trevor Jackson with Baller Talk. How's everything, uh, man? Amazing, man. Amazing. It's a beautiful day. I'm alive. I'm breathing. Right. It's going pretty well. We got some plumbins and oranges in the background. <laughs> yeah. So tell me this. So, like, have you ever, like, used, like, because you have a great, like, you know, back backyard here, which Thank I you, think man. is awesome. Thank you. You got Long some lemons, coming, some lemons, some oranges. Are you ever using any of those, like, any juices or anything? Occasionally, yeah. I might I might cut up a lemon, cut up a juice here and there. You okay. know what I mean? I like the natural, the natural stuff. Mm. <laughs> now, I also feel like you could definitely use it for a chaser. And speaking of, oh, yeah. you have an amazing brand I want you to talk about a little bit. Yes, yes. Despacio. It's a mezcal. Okay. Uh, it's the best mezcal on Ooh. the planet. So make sure you go try some Despacio. It's in all the stores. Mm. It's online. Um, yeah, it's an amazing, amazing uh, uh, mezcal to mix with different fruity flavors, strawberry, lemonade, pineapple. Um, it's pretty smooth. Smoky and smooth. What attracted you to want to be a part of that? Because I've noticed that a lot of artists, which is great, they're expanding their brand. So what made yeah. you want to expand your brand in this lane? Um, I think this, I mean, I drink occasionally, but I think mainly, um, uh, I just wanted to s s go in different avenues. I don't think it was just yeah. alcohol specifically, but this kind of presented itself and I like the people that were involved. Okay. And so I wanted to put myself, uh, you know, in that space and I'm just trying to make monies eight different ways, 20 yeah. different ways, you know what I mean? Uh, whether it's investing in this or real estate or, okay. you know. Trying to be more than just a, you know, unlimited artist, income. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like too. a little smoky mezcal here and there sometimes yeah, too. Like yeah. a little smoky margarita kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. Little tahini kind of rim. Yeah, that's for you. You know yeah, your stuff. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Is that like kind of like more on your vibe or like what is like, you know, Trevor's like go to like if you were to have like a cocktail or anything? Mm, I, I like a mojito. Okay. I like a mojito. I like a margarita, maybe espresso martini. Ooh. That's probably my top three. Okay, I'm okay, okay, okay. I gotta yeah. go to the bar with you one time. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, one thing that I really enjoyed, and it had like a fun little bar scene in it too, was Jay Lewis and Project. Yeah. Now, I thought you did a phenomenal job. Thank you, man. Thank you very I think much. it was such a great project. And the common consensus that I got from a lot of the actors I was able to like chat with or, you know, share that they shared their stories in the project is, is that they didn't really know what it was about yeah. at first. They kind of just signed on because, you yeah. know, they were great friends of hers and et cetera. Yeah. So when you were approached about this opportunity, did you know, like, about what the story was about? No. Just, okay. They said J-Lo. And you were like, yes. I'm sold. Yeah. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. I mean, I've, I've been in love. I mean, who hasn't? I've been in love with J-Lo since I was a kid. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then, obviously, as you get older, I started loving her for different reasons. And, mm. and when I got on set, I was like, oh, I love her for different reasons. She's just so... Uh, She's such a boss, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think a boss is somebody who knows how to conduct themselves in different spaces with different people. You got to know your team. And I think she just, she was able to be in front of the camera, behind the camera, take care of this, take care of that. And that, as for someone who does multiple things as well, yeah, it was super uh, inspiring to see. Um, yeah, she was just a strong, fearless, graceful woman. And uh, yeah, it was super inspiring. What was it like to be directed by one of your childhood crushes? Because, oh, you know, that must be like a really it big feels, thing off the bucket list. It's like almost, you know, a little, uh, I don't know what the word is, but I'm like, I, whatever she said, I'm like, okay, yep, yep. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm yeah. like, I was like, hold on, you can't give it too much, man. You gotta be a little, <laughs> maybe push back a little, Trevor, push back. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, I uh, that. Yeah, that was cool, man. It was really cool. One of the cool things I liked is the blooper. The blooper is really yeah. funny. Now, no one at the end. At the end, yeah, yeah, yeah. No one can ever say that they mushed some cake in J Lo's face for fun. Like, no one can ever have that. Yeah, I mean, when you were in that role, like you know, donning that amazing tuxedo and abiding the role, what would it take for you to wear that in real life? Oh, I'd wear that to a carpet or anything. Like, were well, you talking well, about in that just... context? Oh. Like, in no, in in sense of like um, like a wedding or et cetera, like that, like. Oh, what would it take for like Trevor to kind of be in a tuxedo walking down the aisle? Like, what are some key qualities that Trevor Oh, if for? I'm getting married? Yeah. Oh, totally married. different question. I thought you were just saying wearing a tuxedo. I, was like, dude, I mean, wear, I think you look right now in a tuxedo. I'll wear a tuxedo, whatever, dude. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, marriage. All right. Damn. Um, okay. I need uh, I need unconditional love, obviously. You do need that. I, I, I think uh, once you make that decision, it's like, hey, we're doing this. Yeah. We're going to make it work. And I think it's compromise. I think it's hearing each other out. I think it's open-mindedness. Um, and I adventurer. Like, I want to live. I want to go do stuff. I want to try new things. Yeah. Um, but most important quality is good mother. And, uh, yeah, that's number one. Yeah. I got to see. And, and how you treat people. I always watch people when they don't think I'm watching them. You know, yeah. how they interact with, like, other people. Like, a waiter or somebody that's walking by or somebody on the street. Like, how are you, like, looking at them? Are you talking to them? 
you know, respecting and that's them. very, very, very important to me. You know, wherever I'm at, I, I try to treat everybody with the same love and respect, and uh, I expect that from my partner. I love that. Yeah. I feel like, you know, definitely an adventure is a huge, huge deal thing for anybody. Yeah. What is, like, the most, like, impulsive, like, trip you've taken or the most impulsive, like, purchase you've made? Like, how do you continue to make sure your life is full of adventure and just, like, fun, sometimes mindless decisions? I'm trying to do better with that. I want to do more. I've been, like, kind of super work mode. But I think my most impulsive purchase, I, I don't know. I bought a lot of surfboards at one point. Okay. Surfboards are expensive. Okay. I bought, like, like probably like six in like two years okay. which is way too much i you mean know, you need, you need different one... flavors for each time you're out there yeah you need about one or two surfboards though honestly but okay. i was just kind of like in a zone and i'm like hey, yeah I'm i try hate this one this one has like one... a thing like this but you look at this one the nose kind of comes up so it's working when i'm on the wave i can smack the top easy i'm i'm making up all sorts of reasons to get new uh uh surfboard so i probably okay. say that's the most impulsive maybe yeah. okay i feel like yeah yeah now i would definitely ask you to yeah. give me some surfing lessons Sure. But right now, we cannot. Yeah. So, you some know, pointers. yeah, I need some pointers, but I know right now we can't yeah. because we're scooting around. We're scooting around. We got the big boot, as we see here. So, right here. Trevor, what happened? Because when I first saw you on it, we were at the the reception for J-Lo. Yes. And that actually went viral. We were both dancing to a few records, and people were like, oh, my God. It's like, oh, Dan's about to kind yeah. of vibe. But I did see, like, what happened to the boot? And I'm like, I don't know. So, Trevor, what happened? So, what happened? You're talking about initially how I got the boot on. Yeah, how did we get the boot? I was playing basketball with my nephews. Okay. Uh, they were like, Uncle Trev, you don't hoop no more. You don't hoop, Uncle Trev. All right, Uncle Trev, got to prove himself. So, we go the first day, prove myself. It's the talk of the town. Oh, Trevor was hooping. Okay. He was going crazy today. And then when I got home, one of my cousins that didn't see was like, I got to see this. So we're going tomorrow. So, we went tomorrow or the next day. And I'm out there, and it was literally just like a loose ball. It wasn't even like a move that I did. Just a loose ball, and I went to go after it like that. I was like, oh, and then I went to step on it. I was like, oh, and I Ooh, fell right, and then I'm yeah. now I'm freaking out because it felt like somebody shot me or somebody hit me as hard as they could with like a bat, a <sighs> metal bat today, like Ooh. like swinging all the way back, like someone like hurt my mom, like that's how hard they're swinging, you know what I mean? Ooh. Yeah. So I was like, oh, oh, and I looked around and nobody's around me, and I'm like, okay, they got me from far. It was a sniper or something. Somebody, and then I look at my leg and they I'm like, got okay. him. Yeah, and I'm holding my leg and I let go and it kind of just womp. I was like, oh, and I held it back up. Ooh. Man. Uh, my brother was there. My brother uh, uh, majored in exercise science, and he was like, I could tell in his eyes that he knew, but he didn't want to tell me. He said, you're going to be good. You're going to be good, dog. You're going to be good. Yeah, but so eyes are like, widening and widening. Yeah, you're eyes, like, yeah, am I'm I going to be like, good, dog? Because, I mean, damn. Yeah. yeah and he was emotional because he knows I had so much stuff planned to do this year. You know, I had to shoot TV. I got to go on tour. I got to put an album out. So yeah. he knew that. Uh, but everything happens for a reason. You know, I, I believe that God had a plan with this whole situation. Yeah. And so I'm just trying to take it in stride. You know? Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to do your speed recovery. How long Thank have you got you, the boot on for? I think I have the boot on for like two to three more weeks, and then I'm okay. out. Then we're good. Then we're going to PT, and we're going to get that mobility back. Because okay. I'm trying to get back to surfing, man. It's I know. Been too long. And these music videos. Yeah. So, you know, I want to kind of talk about more of the music and the Please. videos that you do. So, yeah. music videos, I feel like they were once such a major driving factor when yeah. it comes to, you know, releasing a single, releing an album, releasing a project. Yeah. But it feels like in today's time it's dwindling down. But it is, there's unfortunately, because I love music videos. I love a good video. Yeah. But it feels like you're bringing back that steam and you're kind of revitalizing it, yeah. you know, you. with every record that you're putting out with these videos attached to it. So tell me this, you know, when it comes to these videos, why do you feel or what do you feel is your innovative approach to revitalizing music videos? And why do you think it is such an important factor in the success when it comes to music? Great question, by the way. First half of that, I'm going to say I am obsessed with films. I'm okay. obsessed with movies. I'm obsessed with great cinematographers, great directors, great stories, right? Yeah. And so when I, you know, most music videos, kind of when you do music kind of the same that I do, it's like, okay, we're going to have some girls dancing. We're going to have some strobe lights, mm. have some close-ups. And I've just seen it a billion times. Yeah. And, you know, Born Art, uh, my company, that's what we represent is doing things differently being authentic to ourselves and not trying to fit into the mold and yeah. so for me i'm always approaching videos like a movie what's the story where are we going even the camera and the grain on my videos i'm like i want the film i want it to feel like a film yeah um and so i think it definitely helps drive the music and i think it helps tell a different side like i feel like you can hear a song and feel a way about it and then you see a video and it might give a whole different perspective so 
Uh, I, and I also like leaving videos open ended, right? Like you don't really know what's going on. Yeah. And I think that's what makes a good project a good project or a good keeps piece of interested. art. Keep somebody talking, keeps the conversation going. What What do you think he meant? What do you think it was? You know. Um, and then what was the second part of the question? I want to make sure I answer. Um, you know, the second part was really like, what do you think we can do to revitalize? You know, mm. the importance of music videos. I don't know, man. I feel like music, music is so hard because so many people do. It. I feel like that's so why I always bring this up. I say sports. I feel like it's easier, right? Because there's yeah. like a gauge. You have get, you have people. You got to be good enough to get in the NBA. Now I just got to play good. I got to score a lot of points. And I'm like in music. So many people are doing so many things. I feel like it's just been devalued a bit. You know, it's not as like, uh, I don't know, special in a way. But I definitely think that uh, it should come back because I grew up on those and I, I just spent hours in front of the TV just watching 106 and Park. Yeah, you know, yeah, watching yeah. The, TV. the TRLs and, and stuff. Uh, yeah, I think you get a better sense of the artist too, you know? And uh, yeah. Is there like a favorite music video that you feel like it, like it shows like your blueprint of like how you want to make sure your videos look like? Or is there like a favorite music video that you repeatedly watch and never get tired Smooth of? Criminal, New York, My World. I feel like you were going to tell me something like Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, I felt yeah, that in my yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that was him. He made movies, bro. You're watching, yeah. you're like, what's going on? It's like a short film. He just turned into a panther. Now he's walking. Yeah, exactly. Like a short film. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just think it comes to, it just, it builds the artistry. And, and for me too, I think it gives me more control of my vision. I think that's everybody's gift on this earth is that they have their own eyes, their own body, their own heart, their own sensors to give their uh, example of what the human experience was for them. Mm. And I think that's what helps people. It's like, hey, you see, oh, my human experience is kind of like that. And yeah. maybe I don't need to trip out as much about that. Or maybe I do need to change this part of my life. Or maybe I should follow my dreams, it's whatever it may be. But I think uh, that's the gift of being an artist is to being able to, you know, tell your side of the story. So, you know, music videos, you know, they yeah. were once like the driving factor to making a record popular, but yeah. it seems like it's starting to lose its steam. So tell me this, like what innovative approaches do you believe could revitalize the role of music videos in driving that popularity? And in what ways are you doing that within your own videos? Uh, well, for me, I think like, even while I'm making the song, I'm coming up with a video concept, the treatment, me and Ian are kind of going back and forth. And I think also what I love about you know, directing or editing or things like that is I'm giving opportunities to other people that I've worked with, whether it's actors, um, actresses, different people in the space. And I know that, you know, a lot of music videos that I've seen is kind of, you know, the same thing. You got the strobe light, you got people dancing, maybe you're in the club, whatever. But I like to give a little narrative so that people can showcase their talents. You know, I, a lot of I did Burning Sands with Christian and Mitchell. They've been in like three of my music videos to, to help drive. And I'm like, I know they can act. I know they're dope. Yeah. I want people to see them. I want people to see their work. So I'm also being able to, you know, help help other people too. Um, mm. But for me, I think it's, uh, yeah, man, I miss the times where it was a spectacle when somebody dropped the music video. It was a spectacle. Everybody's gathering around the TV. Michael just dropped the video. Prince just dropped the video. Luther, you know. Uh, Janet. Janet, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, was a, it was a time. It was an event. Um, and I miss those days. And so whenever I'm making music, I'm trying to, you know, it's almost nostalgic for me. I feel like everything I do, I'm trying to, trying to go back to when I was a kid again. Yeah, a little bit, you know, yeah. I think that always kind of makes us feel, feel better. But, um, yeah, man, these people are larger than life and that's the goal. One thing I would say that has been larger than life, like I said earlier, is like the music videos yeah. and your most recent one with Heads Up, yeah. it featured Chameleon, who... Yeah. We love Chameleon. Chameleon's She's cold, amazing. talented, and real. Tell me this, you know, what was it about, or what inspired you to collaborate with Chameleon for the music video? Mm -hmm. And then also, how do you believe her presence enhanced, like, the visual storytelling of the song? Well, she's a beautiful chocolate woman, and she can act her butt off. And like I said, I want narrative. Like, I've had... You know, sometimes when you do a video, people will reach out, and they'll get a bunch of beautiful women. That's fine. Yeah, they yeah, can't yeah. Act. That's true. And I'm like, okay, we need you to be happy now. Oh, a little sad. Okay. And she bodied it when we, when we were shooting. You know, I'm behind the camera yelling stuff. I'm like, all right, now he's pissing you off. Or now you're rolling out. And she just went, boom, boom, hit it, hit it every time. And so uh, that's why I wanted to be a part of it. And we met at a, uh, I think we met at the Billboard event. Okay. Yeah, we randomly For met Billboard, there. Billboard, Woman in Music. Yeah. Okay. Wait, no, was it? I don't think it was Woman in Music. Was it Woman in Music? It was a Grammy event. Billboard. Number ones, Billboard number ones. Okay. Yeah, I met her there, and me and I and, uh, were talking to her, and I'm like, yo, you're dope. She's like, oh, I was like, we made a video? I was like, I think she'd be perfect for the video, and I was like, I was like, okay, bet. And uh, luckily, we were able to have her, and she did such an amazing job. She's so good to work with, yeah. and um, 
Yeah, it came out fire. This is one of my favorite videos. It was really, it's really like fire. It's one of my favorite videos. Like, this is a really good video. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to do the under the bed video for, since I started this uh, this cycle. I'm like, yo, we got to do some type of video where I'm under a bed. And, you know, they're on top. But you come down and you see me. I'm struggling. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Tell me, this, like, what motivated, like, this record? Because, you know, the record discusses, like, being a side dude. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people in the world can probably relate to that. You yeah. know, so what motivated you to explore the theme of being a side dude with this record? Yeah. And have you ever had an experience as one? Uh, absolutely. So I'll be just very upfront with you. Eric Bellinger and I was in the studio, and I was trying to invite, you know, someone. We just love named, Eric. Love Eric Bellinger. Shout out to Eric Bellinger. Happy birthday, by the way. Is it today? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's today or yesterday. Happy birthday, Eric. Yeah. Dang. But when this drops, me. maybe it's not today. Yeah, okay. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, dude, yeah, so we were in the studio, and I was just, you know, inviting some vibes, coming hang out, you know? And somebody that I called, she's like, hey, what's up? I was like, hey, I'm in the studio. You want to come? Well, I would, but I'm at my man's house right now. I can't. Mm. I can't. Ooh, we got to hang up. Right? And I looked over at him. He looked at me and was like, Inspiration! <laughs> That's exactly how it came about, literally. I'm crying. Um, yeah, so that turned out turned out pretty good. That's not pretty good. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully she calls back when she's not at her man's house. She did. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> great to know. Now, you also collaborated with a lot of lesser known talent like mm -hmm. on your EP, which I think is great because you're giving them a an opportunity to kind of showcase their skills. Absolutely, now, why absolutely. prioritize collaborating with the emerging artists on this project? And what opportunities, you know, or what significance do you place, I should say, on providing opportunities for up-and-coming talent? I want to do what no one did for me, <laughs> for people. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, everything that I would, like, say to myself, like, yo, why don't, blah, blah, why can't I, blah, blah, blah. And now that I'm in a different position, I, I want to be that person. I want to be that answer that I had to all the questions, you know? So, um, and I think the world needs it, needs new faces, needs new talent, people who are really passionate about what they do. Um, yeah, so I don't care as long as it's fire. Okay. Now, uh, what is fire? Is I want to congratulate you because it's also a celebration. Yes, yes. The top 200. I mean. Never before. Never I was going to say, you know, how does it feel to see like all of that hard work of 20 years in this business? Yeah. And now like you're kind of like getting those fruits to your labor. Yeah. You're getting all this recognition now. And, you yeah. know, having this new Acla under your belt. Yeah, it feels amazing, dude. I'm going to be honest. When we were at the NAACP, that was the first time I've ever been to anywhere. And everybody, the first thing they said to me is about music. I remember when I was doing my, you know, when I was first starting music or whatever, yeah. people were always like, hey, I love this. And I'd be like, hey, but make sure you check out my music. Hey, make sure you check out my album. And this was the first event where everybody's like, hey, I loved your album or I loved your music. And I was like, that felt really, really, really good. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just to know that it's not a game to me. I don't do it because I can. I do it because I have to. It's survival. Music is my is my life. It's my saving grace. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm pretty, pretty damn good at it. You know what I mean? And, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to keep doing it. But it's, it's, I always tell people, different musicians I'm talking to or up and coming, I'm like, do it for you first. Like, don't make music because you're trying to obtain anything other than the act of making the music itself. Yeah. And the, and the peace and the happiness that comes with making a good song or making a, 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 a you know, a, a, an impactful song. I've been on the Trevor train for a while. Appreciate that. Dog. So, and I've been telling people, like, the music is good, the album is good. And, before you even started, I told you how one of my favorite projects from you yeah. is The Love Language. Yes. And I really want to know, because I personally feel like I had a lot of great bops. Bops to be, you're everything. Yeah, I, did, yeah. I just wanted the project to have even more eyes on it. Me too. So do you feel, <laughs> I was going to say, do you feel this project, you know, uh, deserve, like, did it get the recognition it deserved? I think it deserved a Grammy okay. nom, at least. I think it's one of the best R&B albums uh, that was out that year. And I think it, uh, even the songwriting, I think, was just top of the line yeah. so yeah that's how i feel about that and that that album to me i really i kind of wrote that during covid time and during black lives matters time and i just felt the world was lacking love that's why i called it the love language mm. um and yeah i totally agree with you yeah, <laughs> uh, but so. hey the beauty beautiful thing about music is that when you gain a new fan they go back you it's know timeless they go they go back and they're like oh 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 and i think that's I think consistent quality is good. Yeah. You know, that you can keep doing it again and again. You know, somebody can score 40 points in a night, but 
it's like, a, okay, a flash in the pan. But if you're doing that every single night, okay, that's who we need to watch. Mm. This is the guy we need to watch. She's next, you know? I need the re-release of the love language. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's I think like we'll add do, some we'll new do like a remaster, you know, two yeah. years down the line, like do like a little remaster, John puts the features on there. Oh, let me do a little open interlude. Yeah, please. I just feel please. like, let's just get this back That'd going. That'd be hard, again. that'd be hard. <laughs> well, you know, let's talk more about like artist development. Because yeah. I feel like you are a very developed artist. I Thank feel you. like artist development kind of lacks these days. So do you feel like it still exists? And how important is it for you as an artist to make sure you're always perfecting your craft, honing your craft, and keep that development going? Um, I think it's so important to evolve. I, when you said that, something that came to me was uh, a lot of people who are new to the industry and get signed. Because artist development is cool if you're with the right people that are developing you. But anybody who's compromising your morals, compromising uh, who you want to be and making you feel uncomfortable or you know, making you do things that doesn't fit. Like, hey, I don't want to wear this jacket. Hey, this jacket's cool, wear it. Yeah. That's not artist development. So my goal with Born Art, when I, uh, you know, start signing artists is to really know the artist. And I remember when I got signed, I was 15 years old. Yeah. And I'm a kid, so everything they told me, I believed. Hey, this is real, this is real, this is real. And, you know, I think it's a little effed up. So that's my goal when I start signing artists is to really be there for the artist, really hear the artist, and know that this is the, these are these kids' lives. When they come from wherever they come from, uh, which most had nothing. I didn't have much. You know what I mean? Uh, this is my life. Yeah. And so uh, well, just when you said that, artist development is good if it's someone who actually cares. Yeah. And not somebody who's trying to make a check. Because most of the people are trying to make a check. How can we recreate something that was successful? Not how can we find out who you are? Yeah. Um, and so I think that's really important. I think it's also important that you you mentioned, you know, understanding when it comes to kid stars and child stars. Yeah. Just child child anything yes. that's in this business, you Dude. know, making sure they have the right support system. And you had an yeah. amazing support amazing. system. Amazing. My mom, my brother. Mom has my been family. there, et cetera. Yeah. Now, we understand sometimes the dark side of things that come to child stars, child actors. Yeah. There's a whole documentary about it called yes. Pride on Set. Yes, yes. So how do you feel like, you know, your family and your, your mom specifically, particularly, yeah. supported you and made sure that you had unwavering support, mitigating any kind of risks yeah. associated with such unfortunate and dark experiences? Yeah, man. Um... Uh, my heart goes out to anybody who's ever been involved with stuff like that. Um, that was that was hard for me to watch, but um, yeah, I'm thankful. My mom has always been always been there, and always my dad, you know. And I think since I was young too, my dad's always kind of like implanted in me, like, hey, the world isn't always that way, you know. Some people are mean, some people are hateful, some people will try and, you know. So I've always kind of been on my guard with that. Um, but yeah. They're always around. I don't like going anywhere without without people, and it's kind of ruined relationships. We're like, oh, you always got family with you. I was like, yeah. I mean, you yeah, should. Yeah, yeah, I do. So, yeah. Sorry, it's kind of what has to happen. Um, and I'm so thankful for it. Uh, so yeah, man, it's definitely hard to navigate, but I definitely say if you have the right support system, man, you'll be okay. Um, but yeah, it, I'm I'm blessed. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that uh, it's gone the way that it has for me. What's like one lesson you learned like that you learned as like a child star until like not into adulthood? That you keep with you, whether it's like a saying or something like your mom had taught you, or et cetera. I mean, success was the best is the best revenge, or something I always used to say when I was young. Guys, I know it doesn't seem like it now, but I had a lot of pent up anger when I was coming up, you know, in this industry. I was like just mad. I was like, why are they not seeing how good I am? You know, and I think a lot of artists struggle with that. And I think it's the again, we were talking about the consistency, the God's timing thing. I had to really like find patience within myself. Um you know, and I had to sacrifice some things. I, I was saying this the other day, but there was a uh, there was an offer that I had from Disney to have my own TV show, to have my own movies, have my own doll, to like everything. They're like, they literally said in the meeting, we want to give you the keys to the kingdom, right? Okay. And I was 15 years old and I was like, okay, that sounds awesome. I want to put an album out also. And they're wow. like, yeah, not really though. That'll be like second. And I turned it down, all of that down. I was wow. 15 years old, just came off Let It Shine. And so... You know, that's something that I I did when I was young, but still sticks with me now. Like, I stick to my guns. Like, what feels right in my in my heart? What do I want to do? Who am I? What do I, you know, what means the most to me? And at that time, that's that's how I felt. And I'll carry that today. You know, if I look at something, I don't care who's attached. If I don't feel, feel part it. of it, feel attached to it, then it's it's not for me. How did you, how did that kind of help you, like, own your own power? That's oh, that very was powerful. Yeah, it is. Like, and some you kids know, are like, let me take that. Yeah, no, like, my mom got cussed out by my agency at the time, you know, oh, like, no. oh my gosh, this is the biggest deal ever. And you're not all. And we had, we just saw further than right now. And I think that helps uh, not only in career, but in your own life. Like, 
you know, long-term decisions, long-term happiness. Like we can be happy for the moment, but you know, let's think about what we really want. Yeah. And uh, to me, I wanted to be a musical artist, and I knew that if I did that, I, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been taken seriously. Not, not because it was on Disney, but because they didn't take me seriously as an artist. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well, so. I'm glad you let it shine. <laughs> <laughs> and you let your talent little segue, shine. Little segue, little segue. Now, you know, you definitely worked with some pretty powerful people on that specific, you know, movie. Which yeah. We don't really get a lot of black led, yeah. you know, movies on a lot of networks. But we had you, yeah. we had Coco Jones, yeah. we had Tyler James Isn't Williams. Isn't that crazy? It's Algie Smith, insane. Chloe yeah. and Halle. Chloe and Halle. Like, so I want to ask crazy, you this. Uh, how you know, has that, how proud of you, you know, so are, are you of each of these, each, yeah, see, I'm excited. Yeah, me how too. How proud of you are each other's accomplishments that you have seen? You know, do you guys ever discuss it, reminisce about it, like to this day, we're, whether it's you, Chloe, Halle, et cetera, like how is that? Yeah, we're all super busy, but you know, when we do reach out, it's always love. I reached out to Tyler after uh, he won his Emmy. I was like, I, love uh, that. I was like, dude, man, I know it's been minute, but I just gotta say I'm so proud of you, so proud of you. And that's really all I said. He's like, yo, man, I'm so proud of you too. I've been seeing everything you're doing. We're just doing our thing, man. We keep working. I was like, bet, one love. And then we'll reconnect and it'll be like, we never left. Um, but it means the world to me, you know, because uh, we all were dreamers once <laughs> and now we're living the dream. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy because uh, I often find myself not being able to see that I'm doing that. You know, I'm like, well, no, now that's my dream. Like, I forget that, hey, like, even when you were saying I got a lemon tree in my backyard, like, I moved to L.A. and I lived in a one bedroom apartment with my mom. And she refused to sleep in the bed. Okay. She slept on the couch so I could have the bed. That was wow. like the first 12 years of my life out here. I was in a literally smaller than this area right here. And, you know, we had a car, no air conditioning. It's hot. We're driving auditions, scripts falling out the car. You know what I mean? So, like, kind of circling back to that, uh, you know, to that place is, um, it's just wild. And I'm trying to do a better job of appreciating and yeah. recognizing, you know, the hard work and all that all that is done for me. Can we, like, shout out Mama Trev? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh... Shout because out, CB the Bull, Cam Baxter. That right there is such a, it's a hard job for yeah. a parent yeah, to literally have to just travel the world with their child. Yeah. And sometimes there's really no plan or action plan. You're kind of just going with the vibe. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Broke. How, right. All the money gone. Year one, all the money gone because LA is expensive. And so, a prayer. Bologna, yeah. and, uh, bologna and ravioli. How has that made you and your mom's bond tighter? We fight every single day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're awesome, but it's because we're so close. You know what I mean? That's that. She's like my mom, business partner, sister, friend. All you know what I mean? She's yeah. she's all that. Like a momager. Uh, she's a momager. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's made our relationship amazing, and it it makes it a safer space for me because I know that there's always people I can trust. Her and my brother. Yeah. And in this industry, it's hard because a lot of people can't. Um. But it I always have that safe space of like, hey, I can say anything to them, tell them how I'm feeling, tell them what I'm going through, and they'll be there for me always. Yeah, uh, I love that. Yeah, that's a special place. Now, there's a full circle moment because you, Chloe, and Hallie obviously start on Let It Shine. Yeah. You guys are now on Grownish, which is in the yeah, last season. Last season, what? Yeah. Six I was, seasons, man. How does that, let's discuss that a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, how does it feel to be on such a record breaking, monumental, yeah. you know, series that a lot of people would say is like the modern adjacent to yeah. a different world? Yeah. You know, what is that like and what aspects? of Grownish do you feel attributed to its success, um, you know, with a different world in its comparison while still maintaining its own identity? Um, yeah, I think, uh, hmm. I think what uh, contributed to its success mainly, Grownish's success, I think is its, uh, its tackle on the hard topics. I think that a lot yeah. of, and, and for it being like young people, you know, we go through a lot. And I think, you know, when you get older, you forget that you were a kid once. You're like, man, they're just kids, blah, blah, blah. But to us, it's life or death, you know? And I think for a lot of... It's heavy. Yeah, it is. And I think for a lot of fans that watch the show, they just saw themselves in the show. Whether it's me, whether it's Luca, whether it's Dig, whether it's Jordan, Yara, yeah. uh, Chloe, Halley. It just, I think it was all the colors of the rainbow. And I think that's, mm. that's the goal to peace. It's showing everybody's story. And I think the only way you can hate someone is if you don't understand them. And I think the show did a great job of helping you understand different cultures, different people, different beliefs. And just because we don't think the same way doesn't mean we have to not like each other or hate each other. Yeah. Um, and so I think that uh, the fact that, you know, these opinions, I, I also like how on the show it never picked a side. Yeah. It presented the two things and let the show in and people can be like, well, I think he was right. Well, I think she was right. 
Kind of or, like a music video. Yeah, exactly. Kind of yeah, leave exactly. us having the conversation. Right, right, right. Which See I what think I did is, there? Yeah, like that. Mm, full, circle, full circle. Yeah, full circle. Um, yeah. Okay. What are some, like, because you have a lot of downtime sometimes when mm -hmm. you're on set. Yeah. So what's, like, an unexpected skill that you probably learned while, like, you had some downtime? Well, not learn, but I got better at is chess. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I, and whenever we're not shooting, I'm playing chess. So you're like a chess master. Not a chess master, but I am good for okay. someone in my position who's not, like, in school to, like, play chess and, like, that. I'm pretty good. Okay. Yeah. You gotta, I gotta like bring up the board there. at some point. Hey, we can. You play? A little bit, yeah. It's been a while. It's been like four years. So I'm oh, a little God, rusty. God, God, God. I'm a little rusty. But I'm sure I can pick it up as I'm you putting it down. So <laughs> what's like one of your like uh favorite like guilty pleasure TV shows or movies that you consistently <sighs> Love have is to blind, watch? man. Okay. Because I can't I really get into it. You right have to give another shot. You have to did you what, what did you which one are we talking about? There's multiple okay, seasons. Okay, so I watched the one before this recent one. The one with Melvin and the, the girl. I can't even tell you the names, but See, you yes. give enough time. You got to give time. Gotta, I watched an episode I, and I was like, what are people, yeah, you like, gotta what get is through, happening You got to get through the, the BS. You got to get through the BS. But okay. it starts getting. So I'm going to give another shot because you yeah, said give it. another shot. It's good, man. And I was saying the reason why I watch <sighs> that type of stuff, I've noticed. So I'm always watching movies. I watch movies like the same movie I can watch 40 times. Yeah. Because I'm finding something new. I'm watching somebody acting. I'm like, I'll rewind the scene be like, why do I want to cry when he's doing it? What is it about? His face, what is it about his, you know, whoever. Mm. So then I'm watching reality shows and I'm like, this this is as real as you can get. Yeah. You know, this isn't somebody trying to do what they learn in class. This isn't somebody, this is somebody really feeling something, you know? So I'm also like studying them and being like, oh, that's what it's like when you get overwhelmed, you don't know what to say and you start crying. Or, hey, that's what it's like when you don't want to tell the, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of pick up on that stuff too, but it also is very entertaining. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to try. Give another chance. Give another chance. I got you, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, you know, when it comes to characters like, Sometimes you can find similarities. You said earlier similarities in these characters. Yeah. What are some similarities that you find in Aaron? I think the uh, relentlessness after the goal. I think I'm that way. You, I mean, I feel like I'm almost a pest when it comes to how badly I want to change the world. You know, mine is a different approach. I love that. But the unity and the love is something I'm fighting for every single day, and and that's why you know I am the way that I am. I want to spread that like. Anybody that meets me, I want their opinion of me or like uh, perception is like, hey, he was just a kind guy. He was a loving guy. Yeah, cool. And I think if everybody was like that, there'd be less mad, angry people on the planet. Um, so, yeah, I just want to spread the love and the joy. And I think he's the same way, you know, and wants a better world. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to spread my love manifestation for Aaron and Zoe. Hey, man. Now, if it was up to you. Because, you know, of course the fans are going to always have, like, who should yeah. she end up with? You don't know how many times I get almost jumped on the street. Oh Why you God. do Zoe like that? Why you do Zoe? I'm like, guys, I'm sorry. It was in the script. I didn't, I didn't choose this. Go yeah, ahead. Aaron got to do a little while. But if it was up to you, would you have them end up together? Or would you be like, I think they're great. Right You're talking about my opinion or if I was Aaron for real? In your opinion. Of me watching the show. Mm -hmm. I want them together. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd want them together. But if I was Aaron, I would have been done. <laughs> I do feel that because that was a lot going on. I would have been done. I would have been done. I'm like, hey man, love you, but from afar. From afar, we can be cool from afar. <laughs> How was your experience on this series that kind of shaped you as like um, an actor? And are there any key takeaways that you believe have significantly contributed to you honing your craft? Oh yeah, I think I'm more relaxed. You know, it's okay. I don't care what anybody tells you. When there's a camera around, it's gonna be a little different. You know, even like these, like I'm always gonna feel them on me. You know what I mean? So I think the more that you do it, the more it's yeah. like, okay, they start to slowly disappear, slowly dissolve. Um, but one thing that I did pick up from being on the show was for the longest time, I didn't watch my work uh, and I still don't really watch it. But I noticed like there were times where I'd be like, hey, I just bodied this scene. And then I watched it. And I'm like, eh, I didn't really do the way I thought. And then there'd be another time where I'm like, and I hated the way I did this. And I saw I'm like, oh, that's one of the best scenes I've had. Yeah. So I'm starting to know what places to set in because I've done it so many times, mm. you know. Um, so that's something I took away for sure. The directors are kind of tapping in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't wait for that. Now my goal is to direct, compose, I was that. write, star in. That's my, that's my dream. Are we working on that? Like, what are some projects we have like that we're working on? Um, right now, I'm working on a project with Shia LaBeouf uh, called Mace, which I'm really excited about. Okay. It's a, like a cop thriller vibe, and Ooh. I'm a giant, giant, huge, huge fan of him. And so I'm just like in awe every time I'm talking to the guy or working with the guy. He's just super uh, introspective, and uh, yeah. he's just he wants to be a better him. And I think you know that's what we're all trying to do. Love that. Um, and he's real, so I, I, I like that a lot. 
I'm working on some projects, producing some different things, maybe some tap stuff, you know, figuring figuring it out. I kind of okay. grew up tapping, you know what I mean? So different, different stuff. But I definitely want to do the whole Charlie Chaplin, direct, edit, compose. I love Charlie Chaplin, okay. by the way. Um, and so, yeah, something like that. He's one of your major influences. Like, who are some of your other influences musically? Uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, oh, man, there's so many, dude. Brian McKnight would be my biggest like vocal inspiration, I'd say. Oh, I love Brian. Yeah, he's McKnight. my. That was my audition song. Anytime I, I oh my I did god, that, yeah. what's uh, the song? Anytime. Okay. Um, but him, who else? Who else? Who else? Voice to Man, directing wise Steven Spielberg is one of my favorite directors of all time. Isn't he so good? And I'm just like, oh, man. Sorry, I, we could go on. It's just every movie. Yeah, every movie, yeah. It has all the qualities that I need. You know what I mean? Okay. Even if it's not your like style of movie, I just think it's he always tries to tell the human experience, which I think is all we need to see. Um, is there anyone else? I mean, Martin Luther King. Be like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, we all have a dream. My ancestors, you know what I mean? Been through a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. I, I can also say, like, I see, like, some Usher. Oh, oh. And you for Sorry, sure. huge. That's a, that's. So, my wow. last tour when I was on with Eric Bellinger, I did the guitar solo from uh, You Got It Bad every show. And uh, yeah, I did that because I wanted to pay homage to him. Yeah. He was somebody that, that was the first music I remember singing when I was a kid. Like in all of the videos of my dad, like showing me, uh, showing me like old videos. I'm always like, dad, dad, listen, listen, listen. And I'm singing like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you go to one of his residencies or you and I get to I go to, to it? I didn't get to go yet. It's you know, I think, though, right? No, I think he's having some new ones because I also did not I didn't, get to go. I didn't get to go, bro. And I'm like, I need to go and see And I'm going to be, let me just tell everyone here, I'm going to be a mess in there and singing every song to the top of my, When he did the Super Bowl, people were mad. They're like, can we hear him sing? I'm like, no, I'm singing loudly. And so you were one of those that was in the, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was dude. too, so I'm During not, the Super, not They were like, can we hear him? I said, yeah, maybe go to your house if you want to hear him. Right. Because right now I'm vibing with Usher. What's like your top five Usher songs? This is such a huge thing. Good question. Good question. Uh, I'm going to say <clears throat> Do It To Me. Yeah. Um, Superstar. Ooh. Confessions. Um, I like trading places a lot. That just came. That's a really good one. Uh... Oh man, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna. I'm gonna nice and slow on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was hard. That was hard. That was a good list though. Okay. okay I good. still try to like hit the superstar note. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I can. On a good day, I can. Okay. I'm telling you, it was like I remember the one time I hit it well was when I had COVID, when I had COVID. I was so sick I didn't talk for like two weeks. Okay. And then my voice just did it, and then it left again. It, that's what my voice does. I don't know. Like I would do it right now, but I don't want to embarrass myself. I, I so, will not even try because no. I will embarrass myself. I will literally embarrass myself to the wall as I <laughs> So, like, they already give me in the comments enough. I don't need anything else. Now, the team mix is I love them. Thank you, man. You know, and I want to really end this with, like, more about your music. Yeah. So, with the team mixes, it's so popular, and it's actually one of my favorite things on social media. Yeah. So, like, you know, what do you think attributes to that popularity with team mixes? I think people, I think it goes back to the consistent quality thing. Um, and to be honest, I didn't want to do those. For the longest time. Why? My, uh, cause I, it's like my art. It's my profession too. And I'm like, hey, Centered I'm giving it for free. It. And I'm also yeah. like working hours in here trying to come up with the best verse. So I'm blowing my voice out, trying to get to hit the best note. You know, I don't just do it quick. I'm in there like, hey, 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 this has got to be right. You know what I mean? So, uh, at first I was kind of struggling with that, but then I was like, my brother said something to me. He was like, dude, you're a boundless, limitless, creative person. So don't feel like because you did an amazing verse, you won't be able to do it again. He's like, you're going to you're gonna do this over and over and over again. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. And then when I did, you know, people showed up. And yeah. uh, it meant a lot. I, I, I just, all I all I wanted was to people know, like, hey, I do this for real. Because like I was I said, liking, I was sharing. Thank I'm you, like, thank you, man. send it out. Thank you. And it's just like all these artists put me on a record. I sound good on it. Put me on the feature. You Has that, mean? like, you know, kind of helped you land, like, some, you know, connections, opportunities, or possible collaboration, um, conversation? <laughs> because we're, like, we kind of need, like... Not really, but it has helped with, uh, I think, just people knowing that I'm a musician, not yeah. just, like, a guy who's trying to do it. Um, but, yeah, when that time comes, when that time comes... We're going to celebrate it. We're going to love that. I'm going to let go of my little, you know, my pettiness a little bit. People that ain't, you know, respond back or, you know... <laughs> yeah, you know what? Because they always come back around. They always come back around. They always come back around. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's how I see life. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, people have denied me and I'm like, but 
Now yeah. they're back. Now look, now look. They're like, oh my God, actually, we kind of really want Ty. And I'm like, oh, That's you guys want me to die? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take it though. So yeah. it's fine. Right. Now, this digital era is pretty interesting, especially, you know, as artists. There's chat about tips being banned. People's music are not, you know, accessible on some platforms. Yeah. Like, it's a lot for today's artists in today's it time. Is, it is. How do you navigate, like, the ever evolving digital space as an artist? You know, especially with, like, the recent concerns and just, like, you know, how it evolves and changes day by day. I think it's. It's difficult, man. I try to be like water and just ebb and flow, you know, with whatever's happening. But it's yeah. not just the music now, right? It's the content. It's like, how much are we posting a day? Like, Oof. and for me, Scheduling. I'm such like a real, like trying to like touch the grass, be barefoot and like meditate and like live my life that it's hard for me to do that. And yeah. so I'm working on that. I'm just trying to be more there on the, yeah. But for the longest time, I was like, I'm not going to do that. Okay. I'm not, but now I'm in a different space. I'm like, <coughs> we're glad you're doing it. Thank you. Yes, yes. And uh, it's fun. It's fun. I, I like sharing. It. Yeah, yeah. And I like that they just get a, a better sense of who I am as a person. Um, and I think that always helps. But yeah, for the longest time, I struggled. I struggled with that because I just never wanted to be fake. I never wanted to not be my myself. I feel like I, I always strive for realness, and it's hard to like hold the phone and be like, hey man, you know. Yeah. And, you know, it's like when people hold up the phone and they're crying. It's like, huh? Yeah, how that's like holding, one thing I really can't get with. How sometimes. are we holding the phone and tears are falling? I, I don't understand that. I can't. I can't do I, that. I, one. I, I don't understand. Respect that. to those who did. Yeah, respect. Respect. I'm just. I'm not doing. I, that. Yeah, I don't understand that. I and then you gotta wipe the tear after. Wipe and it. then you gotta rewatch. I'm thinking like, <laughs> no, you gotta that's rewatch what I'm saying, you're yourself. Rewatching it before you post it. Yeah. And then type in the caption. Yes. At that point, I'm putting the phone down. Right. For I'm, myself. I, if I'm actually sad, you know what I mean. Yeah. And that's where it gets a little. So it's a little murky over there. Yeah. What has been like the the best fan encounter that you have ever had? Like from like your music I think the or tats, cetera. dude. The tats. When like someone tour, has tatted. Oh, oh wow. Multiple tats, dude. I've seen lyrics. Like your face. Not my or, face. Okay, that's Wait. that's interesting. Or have you seen your face on like a tat? My face, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Someone has your face. Yeah. Someone had my face. Where was We've had it? the album. I think it was like right here. Okay. On their arm right here. Um, face. I've had like rough drafts on like the shoulder wow. i've had like music lyrics from one of my first albums like in my feelings album oh my god wow. yeah that stuff means the world to me when they come i'm almost crying i'm like Ugh. yeah that's Ugh. where i would cry on camera you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i'm just like wow like you just never know and i want to say this too to like my fellow peers or like even people that are beyond me actors musicians like i know we get used to this life right and i'm sure you can understand like you start seeing celebrities all the time you start doing this and you forget what you mean to people who don't live in LA and you forget that you probably saved this person's life. And my thing is, I know that we are like, we want to say, Hey, we're a human. So I don't feel like taking pictures. I don't feel like talking. It's like, but you decided to put on the cape, bro. You decided to put on the cape. So yeah. wear the cape and obviously have boundaries with yourself, but be kind to people that want to talk to you or that want to shake your hand and say hi or do any of those things because you just never know what, what you mean to that person. That person could have been on the way to do some bad stuff to themselves, you know? You just and, their day. and you just switch that around. Um, yeah. I remember when I was young and I met somebody and I was I was devastated because I was like everything I thought, you know, it destroyed me. And Ooh. I made sure after that I would never be that to anybody that ever looks at me in that light. Yeah. Um, and yeah, man, I think that's, yeah, I just wanted to share that because I always see that. You know, I, I know some people were like, man, I don't, blah, blah. I'm like, yo. You decided to do this. That's like me getting on the court and be like, I don't feel like shooting. I don't feel like passing the ball. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So it's, you know, I, I know we get kind of caught up in this hustle and bustle, but there are people who 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 really look up to you or really um, love you and that you made their life better in, in some way. So, you know, take the take the five minutes to shake the hand, take the five minutes to take the selfie and be appreciative that that what you're doing matters. Yeah. Because to me, that's what it is. When people come to me, I'm like, hey, I, I, I matter. I, I helped yeah. something. And I, you know, whether you help one person or a million person, you did enough, you know? If you help change the course of one person's life or a million people's lives. It's funny you said that because so, there's always like a saying like you should not meet your idols. Yeah. But have you met an idol that you were so happy to meet and they like received you so well? You're like, oh my God, like this is everything I, I, I expected from them. Kadeem Harrison was super, super dope. I love that. Um, Michael B. Jordan was super duper dope. And that's been every time, you know? Um, yeah. Okay. There's, some, there's more, I'm sure, but yeah. I wish the list was longer. Of people that it's I gonna really get love, longer. Of people that I love, though, that I met that was like, hey, especially being black, 
You know what I mean? When you're being, when you're black in this stuff, you want somebody older that's black and say, "Hey, dude, I see you. I get it." And I didn't really have as much of that as I wanted to have yeah. from people that I thought were gonna give it to me. And again, that's when I go back to why I am the way that I am. When I'm doing music videos, when I'm doing projects, I'm trying to bring people in. I'm trying to, you know, help. Um, Cause we need more of that. We need yeah. more of that. Well, that's why we have each other. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Tell me this as we wrap up here. Yeah. When can we expect like a new project, a new album? Because mm -hmm. the last one was pretty short. Okay, yes, it was. It was uh, kind of intentional. But uh, I think the next project uh, will be before summer. Okay. Before summertime. Um, but please believe there's so much music. Mm. I mean, there's so, so, so much music. Um, yeah. And I can't wait for the world to hear it, man. I put, I and put you're every, writing and producing and writing, all the things on. Writing, right? engineering, my brother is vocal producing, engineering. You know, we do it together. And uh, yeah, man, I put uh, everything that I am into the music. All mm. of it, you know, uh, hours and hours on end. Sometimes I wake up out of my sleep, come all the way down to the studio okay. just, to, just to record something. Or, or I'll be in the middle of something. I got to write a whole verse real quick, you know. So yeah, a lot of man hours. I've definitely... Done the what's the thing the ten thousand hours thing, like put the work in. Yeah, but it, what is the thing saying? Uh, ten thousand something. Anyways, I put in 10, way more than yeah. ten thousand hours. Above ten thousand yeah, hours. Yeah, much, much, much more than that. But okay. I'm really excited about it, man. And it's uh, it's a little, a little toxic, a little messy, a little. Okay. Okay. Keeping it real though, like you were saying before, there's a being the the side guy isn't talked about much, um, but I think it's time. Yeah, I think it's time. I'm really excited to see how you talk about it. Yeah, because Heads Up was pretty dope. Hey yo! And will this Heads project also be part of like Born Art? Like, will this be through like your like? You yeah, know? Born okay. Art. I'm always collaborating with. I'm um, collaborating with United Masters right now. Okay. Which shout out to United Masters. They've been doing amazing, amazing stuff. So one thing I want to say too, that has kind of changed the course of what's happening is I took control of my business and started hiring the people I wanted to work with. That's important. Uh, NPR, uh, Erica. Aaron. Can we clap for Erica yeah, and Aaron? Yeah, yeah. I tell you, those two are yeah. so good. They're amazing. They're amazing. So I hired them. I hired a production uh, uh, manager, Nicole, KB, okay. my uh, my digital market. But I had to become that person. Everything that I wanted people to do for me, I had to just become that. Yeah. You know? And it sucks. You know, we wish stuff was handed to me. I have a song that said, I used to think success would be handed to me. Then I grew up. Mm. I just grew up. I was like, okay, I, if I want it done, I got to do it. Yeah. And uh, it's sacrifice, you know, I'm spending my own money. I'm paying my own bread to put out my own records, to pay for my own videos. Um, but that's how much I believe in myself and I believe in what I'm doing. And so to everybody out there, you know, that's 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 what it takes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just want to make sure I said that. Kind of like the same sentiments that J-Lo had with her project. Yeah. Putting her own bread putting in. Putting yeah. her own bread in. Yeah. And just like, we're going to just rock it out and see what Let's happens. Let's go. Let's go. Look at that full circle moment. Yeah. Did yeah. you have a good time with us today, Trevor? I had an amazing time. This guy's awesome. And he's gonna have his own that. talk show. I'm saying it now. Will you come on it? Yes. You're like the part of the first guest. As long as I can perform. Yes. And as long as I'm okay, cool. That's you can perform. You can do whatever you want. Okay. And we need to. Have, you need to have like a game segment. You know what Ooh. I mean? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Next time when I do this again, yeah, yeah. we'll have more games. Cool. 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 Okay. I like games. Listen, y'all. Thank y'all so much for chatting with us today and watching Baller Talk. Keep Peace. streaming. Okay. The EP is out right now. You, like you said before up. summer. Heads up, it's out right now. And go watch the video. Go watch the video. It is so good. Hi, hi, All the side guys, we see you. Thanks Thank so you, much, bro. Trevor. One love.